vectors that just we consider a sequence of vectors in Hilbert space. A sequence of vectors in Hilbert space. And this sequence is called stationary if the inner product V n1 vn2 only depends on the difference only depends on the difference n1 minus n2 <coughs> and in this point uh, by standard theorem this can be written as integral just e to the i uh, uh, maybe let me write like this, z some measure of so and in fact for the purposes of this talk I will be interested only in the case this measure is absolutely uh, continuous everything okay with sound? yes? to to bene? devo parlare più forte, meno forte? no, no, bene uh, uh, okay, so just uh, and uh, 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 just the measure we will always assume it to be absolutely continuous. We will assume it to be absolutely continuous. So I write W of Z dz. W of Z dz. So uh, this will be just my situation. Singular components. There are a separate group of theorems which says that singular components. Uh, the, which explains the role of singular components, but this will be not a situation of interest for us. So, uh, uh, this situation allows us to have spectral isomorphism between uh, this sequence of vectors and the sequence of vectors z to the n in, uh, so vn, z to the n, n in z, uh, in L2 of the torus with W. Maybe I write dm. It's better to write dm of that for the back measure. Wdm. Wdm. So this can be interpreted, the sequence of vectors can be interpreted. We are uh, maybe not going to concentrate on. Um, uh, uh, precision in terms of probabilistic interpretation, I will just say that this sequence can be interpreted as, it is in fact a stationary process in large sense, and so it can be interpreted as some sequence of events passing in time. And then uh, the natural question that arises is the question of prediction of these events. So how much do we know about the future if we know the past? And in precise terms, we obtain uh, the quantity, which it is quite traditional to call this Femum. So this is the distance from the function 1 in this Hilbert space, in this L2, to the span of uh, z to the n and at least 1. And at least one. So, in other words, we can say that the figure here is just well, the square of the distance. It is just the integral of one minus p square w dm over the circle. And by the way, so far my exposition follows a very nice book of Nikolsky. Uh, so, uh, just. Uh, 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 just uh, uh, which is called operators, functions, and something else, an easy reading. So, an easy reading. If you, if you know how to read. An easy reading, exactly. An easy reading. No, it is actually AMS. An easy reading. Yes. So, um, AMS. Uh, yes. Uh, so, um, uh, P, so in femum, excuse me, in femum over P, uh, which has zero uh, uh, free term, so Z plus and so on, uh, A, A1, Z plus A2, Z squared plus and so on. So in femum over polynomials, which start with Z. Okay. 
So, to deal with this question, there are many ways, uh, there are very many ways of dealing with this, and so to expose this question, so uh, let me first, <coughs> let me first uh, start, in fact, with the space, with the space even in usual, uh, so with, uh, in fact, uh, the space of functions, so uh, the, the span of positive powers of z. The span of positive powers of z. So h2 of t is the span, h, I will not write of t, but it's of t, and uh, there is a very interesting relation between similar space on the line, but let's not, on the, also on the disk, but let's not just, so it is just span, the Hardy space, span, Uh, to zero. Very good. So we have uh, in this space natural operator of multiplication by z. Natural operator of multiplication by z. So in fact, in uh, in the whole space L two L two of the torus with so obviously in L two so in L two of the torus we have natural orth ortho of the torus with respect to the usual Lebesgue measure, we have natural orthonormal basis, Zn, N and Z, and we have the operator, the shift operator. So there are no, in, there are no non-trivial doubly invariant subspaces under the shift operator. In fact, it can be proved without much difficulty that a doubly invariant subspace under the shift operator is L2 of a subset. L2 of a subset of T. Yes, yes, L2 of a subset of T, yes, precisely. L2 of a subset of T, exactly. So, so there are no, uh, this I leave as exercise for students, uh, just it's, uh, it's in the book, so <laughs> because it's not very relevant for our discussion. So uh, L2 of uh, a subset of T. Uh, at the same time, uh, the family of simply invariant subspaces is much richer. So simply invariant subspaces is much richer. So in fact, there is this H2, which is simply invariant. And uh, the first statement, so I don't need, I think, the spectral isomorphism anymore. Uh, it was just for motivation purpose. So I don't need it anymore. Uh, I do, however, need uh, very much the next theorem. So in fact, uh, uh, the public is invited to guess. So invariant subspaces. So, so proposition a subspace E in L two of T yeah? uh, invariant under multiplication by Z invariant under multiplication by Z. What is it? What is it? So it's, uh, one can try to guess. So looking at H2, uh, one can try to guess what else can one have. In fact, we can have, so multiplication by Z, under multiplication by Z, we can have E, uh, then E is equal to theta times H2 and uh, invariant, excuse me, I should say invariant, uh, strictly invariant, strictly invariant, strictly invariant, strictly invariant. So that is to say, uh, under multiplication by Z, so I want to say that e, Z, E is strictly. So as, because as I said, uh, double invariant subspaces are trivial. So that is strictly to, Z, uh, to E has the form E equals theta H square, where absolute value of theta is equal to one almost surely. So let us prove this. It's a simple, elegant uh, statement. Uh, and uh, for this simple, elegant statement, Nikolsky quotes Helson. So in fact, uh, Björling and Helson. So in fact, it is, uh, Björling and Helson. It is uh, quite late 
So it's much later and significantly later than Sego, for example. So this, this uh, understanding uh, appeared sig significantly later than the Sego theorem itself. Uh, okay, so um, yes, uh, uh, well, let's prove it. So let's consider theta a function in E minus ZE. Okay, then uh, it's some function, we don't know what its properties are. Then, of course, the subspace theta h square. Uh, well, no, let me proceed, let me proceed in order. So, uh, then uh, theta is orthogonal by the very definition to theta z to the k, k bigger than 1. And writing it down, we obtain integral theta theta bar uh, z to the <coughs> minus k dm is equal to 0. Uh, this is, in fact, not one relation, but two, because conjugating, we also obtain integral theta theta bar z to the k dm equals to 0. So for k, as always, greater or equal, excuse me, to 1, which precisely means that theta theta bar is a constant. So which precisely means that theta theta bar is a constant. And uh, Sorry, so you mean z times e is uh, included in e and not equal to e? Yes, that's right, excuse me. Yes, I should have written, yes, in fact. Thank you very much, yes, in fact. Yes, yes, because as I said, if it is equal, then it's L2 of a subset. Yes, yes, thank you very much, yes. Whereas if it is not, so, okay, so we have, so at this point, theta, absolute value of theta is equal to 1. Uh, and we have, so E contains, so from all the above, E contains theta h square, and uh, it only remains to prove that there is nothing else, but in fact, we say, okay, maybe there is theta 1 in E minus theta h square, and again, uh, we have uh, that uh, uh, in short, we have theta theta 1 is equal to a constant. Is equal to a constant because let's see. Uh, uh, we have. Uh, What I want to say, uh, yes, yes, uh, so, I want to say theta, uh, in, not in theta square, but not in, so let me write it like this, not in ZE. So imagine that something is left, so that this theta is not the only one, that this theta is not one dimensional. Then, in fact, since, uh, uh, since, uh, yes, like this. Since uh, theta is orthogonal to, so theta 1 is orthogonal to theta z to the power k, and on the other hand, theta by our assumption is orthogonal to theta 1 z to the power k, again we obtain that the integral theta theta 1 bar z to the k is equal to integral theta theta 1 bar z to the minus k is equal to 0, and so again it is a constant. So, in fact, there is only one such function, and the uh, berling helson theorem is completely proved. So, now, so uh, just now, we can, and uh, by the way, all this, uh, all, all this argument has very beautiful interpretation in terms of uh, inner-outer decomposition, but let me not uh, uh, go into uh, a lot of detail, but now let me imagine, let me imagine, so now let me imagine, so now how is this related to uh, Sego theorem? Let me imagine that uh, there exists Imagine there exists a function f such that f square is equal to 
uh, W and uh, uh, FH2 is equal to H2. Function F and H2, of course. Imagine there exists such a function. If such function exists, then uh, it is immediate that the mm, uh, Sigur infimum But observe that, as we said, FH2 is equal to H2. So in particular, obviously, FZH2 is equal to ZH2. So this quantity is equal to the distance square, square between F and ZH2. Distance. Oh, excuse me. Yes, yes, of course, of course, of course. Absolutely, yes. Thank you very much. Infimum in P. Thank you very much. Yes, of course. Infimum in P. Yes, yes, of course. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes, infimum in P. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, infimum that is written here. Yes, of course. But this in turn is equal to, well, the zeroth coefficient of f. Just the zeroth coefficient of f. So just finding such a function is uh, uh, the moment that such function is found, we're, how to say, in great shape. So, and in fact, as I say, there is an inner outer decomposition that any function can be decomposed as a product of uh, inner function and an outer function. An inner function is a function of absolute value one. And an outer function is a function is a function uh, of uh, excuse me such that f h two is equal to h two. In fact, let me just say this briefly on the margin that if I have any function I like, uh, just I consider f h f h two, and uh, just then this f h two uh, is obviously z invariant subspace, uh, so I can take it as e. And then this E is some theta H2, and then F is uh, theta some F tilde, and this F tilde has the property that F tilde H2 is equal to H2. So precisely is the outer function. So uh, just uh, we can. Uh, um, so uh, observe that uh, this equality, the essence of this equality, is that we are able to um, invert. So the point is that we are able to invert, maybe not precisely, but approximately, invert f in H2. So now the question is how to find such a function. And, well, it is possible to find it, and uh, so I just write it down, uh, and honestly, I don't have uh, a good uh, explanation uh, for this uh, formula, and uh, just f of z is, in fact, is just the exponential of integral of the circle. Uh, So, uh, excuse me, uh, all this, excuse me, I forgot to say that all this under the key assumption, under the key assumption that log w is in L1. In fact, if log w is not in L1, then the infimum is zero. Then the second infimum is zero. So, yes, so this times uh, log w of dm of xi
So, and uh, again, honestly, uh, uh, I am not able to give uh, a good explanation for this formula. Uh, uh, the point is that if I take now the absolute value, the absolute value of f square, the absolute value of f square, then precisely this this kernel, this kernel uh, becomes the Poisson kernel. So this is well, obviously, holomorphic function whose real part is the. So I guess this is the best I can do. So uh, there exists holomorphic function whose real part is the Poisson kernel. So in particular, uh, we have this, we have uh, this, uh, and. Uh, 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 I s must be missing one half. Yes, uh, we have this, and uh, uh, yes, in fact, and uh, um, this function is clearly this function is clearly <coughs> in H two, and it is equally clearly and uh, equally clearly satisfies this because it can simply be inverted when we put a minus sign. It is in H2 and it's inverse in it in H2. It is in H2 and it's inverse in H2. So uh, this function satisfies us completely and we are ready to conclude the proof of, uh, 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 we are ready to conclude the computation of the figure in FIMUM and we obtain uh, uh, for the figure in FIMUM, uh, uh, so we need to take uh, the Fourier coefficient at uh, we, we need to take the coefficient at zero so that is to say the value uh, at uh, zero and so we get precisely exponential of the integral of the logarithm of the integral of the logarithm of W Yes. So, and this is just uh, this is just the first very beautiful formula, uh, first very beautiful variant of the theorem of Sega. So, this is the so-called uh, sometimes it's called Sega weak theorem. Uh, just again, this theorem was obtained. Uh, this theorem was obtained by Sega in 1915. So it was not, I was not able to discover from the sources at my disposal whether he obtained it already in the army. So for example, Wittgenstein wrote his Tractatus in the trenches. And in fact, when he was, uh, Wittgenstein was arrested by the Italian army, he was then interned in Monte Cassino and was able to finish uh, his famous work in peace. Uh, so uh, just, uh, uh, but with Sigur, so for one thing I was not, I know he was an officer in the cavalry uh, of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but I, for one thing I wasn't able to find out where he was fighting and whether he concluded the work before or after. But my understanding is that his PhD defense took place already after the war, so already uh, past the empire. <coughs> so uh, uh, the work was published d during the war. Well, obviously 1915, yes, in some uh, journal, German journal. So uh, then uh, he moved to the United States and then the interest, uh, so uh, these investigations were continued uh, very actively by Russian probabilists, uh, specifically by Kolmogorov uh, and also by Crane. And uh, for example, there exists analog in continuous time and uh, how do you say, this uh, gave birth to a, a very rich subject. Uh, the continuous time uh, analog is significantly more difficult to prove. Significantly more difficult to prove. In particular, Nikolsky doesn't do it in the easy reading. Uh, so, uh, just, um, uh, however, then uh, the question arose about the next term of the asymptotics. 
So, uh, and this was significantly later, and this was due, in fact, to the interest, to the interest of the physicists, uh, notably of von Sager, and in the study of the Ising model. In the study of the Ising model. So let me, again, not go into the details, which I don't know very well, uh, but refer to a beautiful survey of Itz, Krasovsky, and Deft, uh, which is uh, precisely called, roughly, uh, the Ising model and the Sager theorem. Uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, which explains the story in uh, uh, s s great detail. Uh, I want uh, to change uh, gears a little bit at this point, and uh, it will be for convenient for me to formulate the Sigur strong theorem using slightly different, uh, slightly different setup, though uh, very close to uh, what we have been doing so far. So we uh, will consider uh, the, the problem uh, will be uh, considered in a somewhat different way. Uh, so uh, in fact, I will start with an integral from random matrix theory. Uh, I will start somehow in a historically inverse Okay. So, uh, in random matrix theory, for example, uh, it is uh, one of the most important objects is the circular uh, ensemble, so it is a measure on the n-dimensional torus with density. Uh. Oh, uh, d theta, so this is product i less than j and this is product d theta r d theta l d theta j so this measure with appropriate normalization which uh, can be written down quite exactly but uh, is not sorry it's not a good idea using or i is the i is not a good idea yes in fact i, I didn't want to but in fact i meant not to but was not very consistent j yes thank you okay Thank you very much, yes. Uh, it's also, it's even better idea to write square root of minus one, but uh, even if I try, at some point I will write I automatically. Yes, yes, no, I think, no, many people write, and in fact, I think they do well, they write square root of minus one. But uh, even if I try, I won't be able to. So, uh, yes, uh, so uh, this is just a uh, fantastic uh, measure. Uh, <coughs> Uh, this is actually my question to the audience. So, what is the normalization factor? Oh. Sorry? No, uh, oh, uh, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, so, well, but it's not very difficult to, it's not very difficult to uh, determine. So, uh, let us in fact see how, uh, let us in fact see how such integrals are uh, can be computed. So what am I doing, in fact? I am integrating a determinant. I am integrating a determinant. In fact, I am integrating... I am integrating a determinant of a matrix of the following, I'm integrating over t to the n, but in fact this is uh, the least important. So, well, let's write this. So I'm integrating determinant e to the, uh, the van der Monde times the, well, the conjugate van der Monde. Yeah. 
but let, let, me, let me raise the Z at this time. So uh, let me raise the Z at this time. So I am integrating. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Thank you very much. Yes, of course. In fact, I, uh, as you say, k theta j, of course, yes. I k theta l, where k is from 0 to n minus 1. Yes, of course. Yes, in fact. k from 0 and minus 1. So, in fact, in fact, I can uh, represent this product of determinants as determinant of the product of matrices. Uh, as determinant of the product of matrices. So I write determinant of matrix, let's say, Mij. Um, uh, so, uh, sorry, I, I don't understand which matrix you are meaning because there, there Excuse me, excuse me, yes, 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 uh, excuse me, yes, uh, J is, yeah, no, there isn't one, J from 1 to N, yes, 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 please excuse me, and here L from 1 to N. No, 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 wait, wait, no, 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 wait, wait. This is square of the Van der Mo No, wait, but I'm con I, I don't know why I'm confusing my audience in a very simple spot. This is square of Van der Monde, right? Uh, so this is square of Van der Monde. Square of, <laughs> square of Van der Monde, made in K and J. K from 0 to n minus 1, and J from 1 to n. Yes? So square of determinant is determinant of square. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt about that. Uh, so I just uh, write, I just multiply, just a second, so I have this matrix, uh, I just uh, uh, multiply, uh, and <coughs> Uh, however, now, so this is this, uh, but now I want uh, just a second, excuse me. I am, there is something, uh, uh, now I do want to have uh, two demand, uh, now I want to have just, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm confused in some very simple spot. Uh, So this is uh, tautological, um, uh, but now I want to write Now I want to multiply. Yes, in fact, please excuse me. So yes, but since I want, please excuse me, uh, since I want to multiply these matrices, in fact, I need to change this L, excuse me. So yes, this was, it was a good idea to have this L before. I need to change the cell because I am multiplying two matrices. Let us look. Let us let me write this in greater detail. It will become much clearer because otherwise I think I'm confusing uh, people in situation where there is no confusion. E to the i theta one 
e to the i theta uh, n, and so on, e to the i n minus 1 theta 1 e to the i m minus 1 theta n. And now I want to multiply the same by, by conjugate matrix. So, and in fact, like this. e to the i theta 1, e to the i n minus 1 theta 1, e to the i theta n, e to the i n minus 1 theta n. So I take determinant of this matrix. So, and what is determinant of this matrix? This is a determinant of a matrix, let us say, oh, yes, let us say uh, JL, where M JL, Uh, is uh, the sum, yes, exactly, e to the i k theta j minus theta l. Yes. Yes, and the, 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 the integration is in d theta. Well, you can write j or you can write l, but I mean, yeah. So this is the determinant of the matrix. There are n variables, there are n variables, and this is the determinant of this matrix. This is the determinant of this matrix. So now, how does one compute such a uh, determinant? How does one compute such determinant? The whole integral. Say again? The whole integral given. Yeah, how does one compute such integral? Yes. The how does one compute such integral? Change. It is, in fact, even simpler. It is sort of, it is possible in such situation to interchange. This is more or less what you're saying. It is possible in such situation interchange determinant and, uh, and integral. And so, at the end of the day, the only terms that will give non-trivial contribution will be diagonal terms. So, and at the end of the day, I get just uh, uh, quite simply uh, uh, the integral that I get. So, if, if I take normalized uh, measure here, so the integral that I get is like 2 pi to the n. I get this to pi to the n. So, and if I normalize the decetas, uh, then I get really, so if I normalize the decetas, then I get really just one. Just one. So I get just one. So in fact, normalization was very easy. Normalization was very easy. So uh, just because uh, this can be seen, uh, this can be seen from the fact uh, uh, that uh, this can be seen from the fact that in fact uh, the mm, monomials are orthogonal, orthogonal on the unit circle. The monomials are orthogonal on the unit circle. So. Now, I will do same thing, but with a twist. So I will do the same integral, but not with respect to, uh, not with respect to Lebesgue measure, but with respect to some measure W of theta j. Uh, maybe maybe I, I write it all again. Just a second, let me write it all again. Let me put this on top and write it all again. So now I write the same integral, but with uh, W of theta j.
It's all the same interval. W theta j, d theta j over 2 pi. So, yes. Okay. So I can play the same game only here in this determinant instead of just uh, well one I will get W of of theta yes I will get W shifted the shift will depend uh, uh, how to say will depend and so I claim at the end of the day I claim that the uh, end result is the by interchanging uh, again integration with um, integration with uh, determinant. Uh, the end result is determinant of uh, W uh, J minus L, where we write uh, W is equal to, maybe this is not, well, whatever, uh, let me write, uh, so W of theta is equal to sum k in z uh, w uh, <coughs> uh, w excuse me w k e to the i k theta yes so these are the same these are the same uh, Fourier coefficients that we had before. The same Fourier coefficients that we had before. So, and we have this determinant, so j and l from 1 to n. So, the so called Toplitz determinant. And in fact, uh, the uh, uh, formulation which Seguer was considering was, of course, no formulation in terms of uh, stationary sequences, but formulation in terms of Toplitz determinants. Toplitz determinants. And if one thinks, uh, if one thinks that this Toplitz determinant is in fact a Gram-Schmidt determinant, is in fact the volume of the parallelepiped. Uh, uh, spent by the vectors 1, z, z square, and so on, uh, z to the k, in the uh, space uh, with weight w, then one can see that uh, the previous result can be reformulated as follows, uh, that the logarithm of this quantity, th so let's denote it dn, dn of w, dn of w, So just uh, Seguer first theorem. Is that uh, the logarithm of dn of w over n limit as n goes to infinity Is well what we what we uh, what we have already discussed. Uh, wait, 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 wait. If I wrote it logarithm, I don't need exponential. Sorry, excuse me. Yes. Yes. This is the first theorem of Sega. Yes. So now the natural question arises, and this is a question again, uh, interest in which was uh, um, motivated by the study of the Ising model. The natural question arises 
what happens if this is equal to uh, if this is equal to zero? Yes, if this is equal to zero. What happens? So, what does it mean if it is equal to zero? Well, for example, if w is equal to one, then it is equal to zero. So, it's equal to zero. It means that they are essentially orthogonal. Essentially orthogonal. But uh, what? How do I say? What is the? Um, uh, how do I, how do I say? Uh, what is the next term in this asymptotics? So, and very remarkably, very remarkably, Sigur gives an answer to this theorem, to this, uh, to this question. So, in the following very interesting terms. So, let us write, well, we, we see that logarithm of w plays a role. So, let us write, uh, let logarithm of w, let me use the notation phi. Logarithm of w, so w is exponential of phi. W is exponential of phi. So let us write just uh, phi. Let us decompose phi also in Fourier series. I have passed, uh, so I have passed from multiplicative notation to additive notation, but in fact, maybe I shouldn't have because I will go back to multiplicative notation. L let me go back to multiplicative notation right away. So the additive notation was just a moment of weakness. It will be more convenient for me. So this is sum phi k z to the k. Z to the k. So, uh, just uh, k in z, uh, yes. So, and uh, let us assume that, well, that in fact, phi of <laughs> 0 equals 0. So, precisely, that the first term in the uh, Sega asymptotic uh, doesn't appear. Then, so, so this is the Sega strong theorem. Then, uh, in fact, there exists the limit of this Sega determinant. And this limit is, in fact, the uh, Sobolev norm. So, uh, excuse me. In fact, I should, I should have said this. I didn't, but I should have said. So the function phi has to belong to the Sobolev space one, h1 one half. So this is very interesting that the space one half appears here. And the limit is, in fact, uh, so let us uh, uh, assume that the function phi is real. Well, everything is real. Everything is assumed to be real. So I write, let me just write here, phi k is equal to phi minus k bar and uh, so then this is just the exponent of sum k phi k square so after this prologue i am now ready to start my talk and uh, just, uh, just uh, I am going to give a little hint of uh, uh, maybe skipping some uh, details. Uh, <coughs> so I would like to give uh, one proof more or less complete and one proof, in fact, not complete but reduction to another very, very beautiful theorem. So I would like to show two ways of seeing the Sigur strong theorem, one of which I will expose giving essentially a proof, 
uh, uh, skipping just uh, some details, but important details, and one of them I will um, s uh, reduce it to a, uh, to a formula, well, precisely, of uh, Geronimo case Borodino Konkov. Okay, so this is the theorem. This is the Segel Strong theorem. Uh, should, uh, do we usually have a break or not? Five thirty. No, 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 more. Normally, we have a simple seminar which doesn't last more than one hour. Yes. We we planned it. Yes. So you decide. Do you want a break or not? No. No. Okay. No break. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Very good. So. Uh, okay, uh, uh, just uh, first uh, proof is the very, very beautiful proof uh, by uh, Bump and Diakonis. So I should say, there were, there, as I wrote in the abstract, there are very many proofs of the Segostrong theorem. There are very many ways of uh, seeing the Segostrong theorem. There are analytical proofs. So essentially, uh, the initial proof of Segur uh, explained in very, uh, very approximate terms is that uh, Segur uh, proves this result when a W is a rational function, in which case it can essentially be verified as an identity. And uh, uh, then, uh, well, the limit transition is not so uh, is not so uh, difficult. Somehow the point, uh, the point of the theory, even the original proof of Segel, uh, is not, I mean, it's not a very difficult proof. Uh, the, really, the brilliance is uh, to see the right answer, uh, the, uh, to see the right answer to this question, because the answer is very non-trivial. The answer is very non-trivial, that the Sobolev norm appears and so on, so somehow it's very, uh, uh, that for one thing there is no next term in the asymptotics, so there is asymptotics and then it is mm, just a uh, limit. I should say probabilists, probabilists love uh, the segel strong theorem because, for example, the central limit theorem follows directly from uh, segel strong theorem because uh, the, integ the integral on the uh, um, uh, left is just precisely characteristic functions, and well, uh, from here it is possible to see that a characteristic function uh, converges. So uh, that yes, that characteristic function converges. So it's as I say, it is, uh, it is limit theorems for various statistics related to random matrices can follow directly from the Segel-Strong theorem. Uh, just then, there was uh, there were many. There was a lot of effort. There were works of many people to may to prove to find different approaches to Segel theorem. And in fact, the approach I would like to expose is uh, two uh, two approaches are sort of more algebraic than uh, than analytical. So, and uh, the first approach is very beautiful proof of Bump and Diaconis. Bump and Diaconis. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, Bump and Deaconis look at this quantity, look at this quantity, and they want to go back to the, so uh, this is an integral on the torus, but the torus is the um, Cartan subgroup in the unitary group. So, so, uh, let us write this integral, let me write it here, uh, so that I do, not, uh, I do not have to write it again. Uh, just, this is just exponential. Uh, I'm just substituting. This is just exponential from 1 to n. Uh, uh, also, let me introduce the notation, by the way, uh, uh, let me introduce the notation phi plus of z will be the sum over k bigger than zero phi k z k. Phi k bigger than zero phi k z k. 
Okay, so this is exponential. Observe that uh, phi is equal to phi plus plus phi bar, phi plus bar. Yes, phi is equal to phi plus plus phi plus bar on the unit circle. On the unit circle. So this is uh, this is the integral of exponential phi plus square. This is how I can write it. Very good, very good. So now I can write uh, this, this integral. So uh, step one, rewrite uh, star. As, as what? As the integral over the unitary group exponential sum of phi uh, uh, k, uh, let's say, g to the power k, where this is the element, trace, Uh, dg uh, yes and this and here I put square yes yes so I have done several simple transformations uh, some over k bigger than zero I have done several simple transformations so what have I done I have written, so again, uh, I have used this. And well, exponentiation commutes with conjugation. Here's the fact that exponentiation commutes with conjugation. So let's observe that I can write, so I can write, I can introduce the function phi of g, where g is a unitary, unitary matrix. So I can write it as phi plus of g, also there will be phi plus bar of g. And then I take the trace, so uh, this I just interpret as a power series, and then I take the trace. Then I take the trace. Then I take the trace. You shouldn't let you shouldn't let me cheat you, huh? You should you should really you shouldn't let me cheat you like like this. Yes, of course, like this. You, excuse me. You shouldn't let me cheat you like in such shameless way. <laughs> okay, like this. Okay. Okay. So now I write the power series. Now I write down the power series. The power series. So the main idea of so let me explain the main idea of uh, bump diaconis. So it's a very beautiful probabilistic idea. So uh, in fact, so uh, this is just well. This should be the FW. Yes. Okay. It's not that it should be. It is. Yes. Okay. So this is the sum of, well, the sum of, uh, so I write it all out, uh, traces g to the k1, uh, g to the k2, g to the kn, then trace g to the l1, trace g to the ln, conjugated, so over corresponding factorials, sum over everything. Uh, 
yes, oh, excuse me, and the main, yes, thank you very much. And of course, the main terms, yes, in fact, thank you very much. <laughs> the main term, of course, thank you very much, is phi k1, uh, phi kn, times phi bar l1, Of course, by the way, uh, these powers, these powers, uh, uh, so let me write, in fact, uh, it is, uh, this is preliminary way of writing it. Now let me write it in better way. So in fact, I will write like this. Excuse me. So this was preliminary way of writing it. I will write it in better way. Excuse me. Uh, I will write it just... Uh, uh, it's better to write the same thing, uh, same thing, but in the following way, that I have trace of g to the power k1. Now, trace of g square to the power k2, and so on. Trace of g to some, uh, 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 let's say, r to the power kr. Yes, so all of this with corresponding coefficients phi. Uh, then there is trace of g. So the same thing, but with uh, inverses. Trace g square to the power L2. Trace g to some s to the power Ls. And this is with inverses, uh, with inverses with conjugations. Okay. And now I and I have of course uh, the uh, well, I have, of course, the uh, denominator, but let's, let's look at this integral first. Let's look at this integral first. So, what is the first observation that one can make? What is the first observation I can make? What is the first? Now, this integral. So, uh, uh, please, excuse me. Let me now say the most important thing that will clarify what is going on very significantly. The ansatz is that these traces should be considered like independent random variables of expectation, obviously zero, and of variance k. This is the ansatz. If these traces were such independent random variables, then in fact expectation of this exponent would precisely be expectation of some k phi k square. Somehow, because everything else cancels out. Right? Because everything else cancels out. So if they were precisely independent, if they were precisely independent, so as I say, this is a very probabilistic statement. It's, it's uh, really about probabilistic structure of the uh, traces of powers of unitary matrices. So if they were precisely independent, then this would be a quality. They are not precisely independent, so it's not equality. They are, however, asymptotically independent, and this is now uh, the game. Now we want to explain, we want to see in what sense they are asymptotically independent. Okay, so let's make first observation, which is very simple. G can be multiplied by number of absolute value 1. This integral is invariant. The measure dg is in very hard measure is invariant under multiplication. So this integral can possibly be non-zero only if k1 plus 2k2 plus rkr is equal to l1 plus 2l2 plus lls. Ls and this uh, quantity we will know denote by l. And by the way, I should point out that um, the proof is very short, but the fact that its non-triviality is accentuated by the fact that, Bump, that the original paper of Bump and Yaconis is mistaken. It's not a very important mistake, it's reasonably easily corrected, but the actual statements that are written in the paper, are actual intermediate statements that are written in the paper, are in fact wrong. Uh, because precisely, so once they had the idea 
uh, that these things are asymptotically independent. They implemented it, but uh, the, well, that implementation was incorrect. It was it, it's reasonably easy to correct, but just it just shows that uh, you know it's easy to make mistakes in this situation. So. In, in precisely this, precisely in this, by the way, part, the mistake was in this part of uh, um, dealing with cancellations. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, now uh, the um, uh, comes uh, the next point. So, what if they are not? What if they are not, uh, so what if the sums are the same? So now we will use the formalism of uh, sure functions. Now we'll use the formalism of sure functions. Uh, the sh sure functions uh, come up uh, for, uh, uh, so, and this is precisely the absolutely, uh, this argument, very short, is absolutely, how to say, uh, fantastic discovery of a bump and diaconis. Uh, so, to write down, this is, if you think in terms of the eigenvalues, then this quantity, this is sum of eigenvalues to some power, this is uh, sum of square, uh, squares of eigenvalues to some power, sum of, and, and so on, this is, Product of powers of Newton sums. Product of powers of Newton sums. So uh, let us denote, let's consider this Young diagram. So let's consider the Young diagram which has K1 1s, K2 2s. So let's consider Young diagram K1 1s, K2 2s, and so on, KR Rs. R K R. So this is the Young diagram. Let's consider this Young diagram. So uh, let us say this is rho. This is rho. Then we have here the uh, power sum P rho. P rho. So now P rho, the power sum P rho, can be expressed in sure functions. And uh, why are sure functions so convenient? Because sure functions are the characters of the unitary group. The characters of the unitary group are the sure. So you have this expression, it's symmetric expression, I can find you express it through characters. So this so far is just sort of immediate step. So I have P rho, uh, then I have, well, here I have some other diagram, P sigma, let's say, it's also expressed in sure functions. And of course, uh, because of orthogonality of, uh, orthogonality of uh, characters for uh, unitary group, the only inner products in the unitary group which will remain are when they have the same lambda. So this so far is all completely immediate. But now comes the beautiful part. So this I rewrite as the sum of chi lambda rho, chi lambda sigma sum in lambda. But the coefficient in the decomposition of p rho in terms of s lambda, the coefficient in the decomposition of uh, Newton sum in terms of sure function, is itself a character. It is, in fact, character of symmetric group. It is character of symmetric group of L symbols. Character of symmetric group of L symbols. Now there starts to be an interesting game. So I have symmetric group of Ls. So, um, unitary group, uh, uh, both characters of unitary group and of symmetric group are uh, parameterized by Young diagrams. But Young diagrams are different. Young diagrams which parameterize unitary group, UN, have to have at most N columns or lines, whichever you prefer, at most N columns. 
On the other hand, Young diagrams which parametrize representation of the symmetric group of L symbols must have at most L cells. So these are two different conditions. But if N is very large in comparison with L, if N is very large with comparison with L, obviously if you have five cells and 20 lines, you can't have more than 20 lines if you only have five cells. Right? If on the opposite you have 20 cells, then you might have five lines or six lines or seven lines or more lines or 20 lines. But if you have, so here the summation is on Young diagrams with N lines. And here the summation, is, so when I sum over characters of the integer, and here the summation is over character, over Young diagrams with L cells. But summation over n lines includes a fortiori all the L cells. But then this is orthogonality relation for characters of symmetric group. The point is that I have them all here. So this is equal to delta rho sigma. So these quantities these quantities are in fact independent. So not only so these uh, these powers of traces not only are they uncorrelated, but in fact even their powers, even all the moments, are orthogonal, provided that the dimension n is large enough. So there is still some technical work because obviously. Uh, you know, the power series for the exponential, it's an infinite power series, and you also need to deal with, uh, you also need to deal with the case when uh, uh, the, uh, how do I say, when L is bigger than N. You need to deal with the case when L is big and N is small. Uh, there they have also, Bamtiakonis have very beautiful, a very beautiful uh, uh, point that in that case the equality, so here it's just equality, so this, 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 in, uh, this integral is, uh, is equal, so uh, these, these quantities are, or, or, these are suitably normalized, are orthonormal random variables. Uh, but uh, how do I say, if n is not too large, then they have, uh, using similar kind of argument, they also show that in that case it is an inequality. So it's either orthogonal or in fact, if anything, it is contracting. End of story. This is the proof of the Seger limit theorem. Something suggests to me that maybe a different proof I need to explain another time. <laughs> 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 There is still one more, still one more. It's even, 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 even more. It's even, it's in some sense even more, it's even more, uh, how do I say? Uh, it, it, it's, um, well, no, this one, it, it also has a lot of continuation because this, this yeah, thing had more, uh, fruitful somehow, fruitful. fruitful, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this one, more, uh, right, 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 yeah. Just a reminder, that next week there is a conference, so whenever you bump into Sasha, you can ask him, <laughs> the second point. <laughs> but as they're in the conference, there are many people who know it much better than I. So, so there are many. So come to the conference. Uh, just please. Yes. It will be. So questions? There lots of great talks. Does the strong theorem even catch this even when uh, the limit is infinite? This is an excellent question. This is in fact what people are doing. Uh, this is in fact what people are doing uh, very actively. Because in fact, if, uh, so, in fact, uh, this is uh, recent work of many, of many people. For example, when phi has a singularity, so uh, the key word to look is fischer hartwig singularity. fischer hartwig singularity. So this is uh, just sort of what people are doing now. So there is, uh, in some cases, it is, uh, ver in some very special cases, it is done in the work of Krasovsky. Uh, Krasovsky eats... Uh, Dave, Kleiss, and and other uh, other mathematicians, but just uh, I'm not writing it correctly, Kleiss. Uh, but just uh, this is really so. What happens when phi is not in h in h one half? It's important question for applications. 
and it's sort of it's what it's subject of today's investigations. So there is uh, only very partial clarity about that. So it's something you can work on. <laughs> it's completely completely open still.